What's up guys? I am here today in Liberia, Costa Rica, the capital of Guanacaste province in the northern part of Costa Rica that borders Nicaragua. This is one of the oldest cities that you can find here in Costa Rica. It's small, like 55,000 people, a little sleepy, but today we're gonna cover some of the history of Costa Rica. We're gonna learn about its colonial past. More importantly, we're gonna look at some amazing food that you can find here in Liberia. So let's do it. Come along, vamos. Pura vida, ¿cómo está? Pura vida. ¿De dónde eres? Los Estados Unidos. Estados Unidos. Los aquí? cuentos del camino, ¿no me? <laughs> los cuentos del camino de los cuentos. Algo así, ¿verdad? <laughs> sí. Soy de Nuevo México. Nuevo México. ¿Conoces? No. No. Está cerca de Texas. Cerca de Texas. Sí. Natural y refrescante. Sí, en serio. Ok, perfecto. ¿Y uh, cuánto cuesta? A luego. Pura vida, Costa Rica. <laughs> As we start our tour, one thing you should definitely do when you're in Costa Rica is get a pipa fria. Pipa is the local way they say coconut. I always thought it was coco, but coco apparently is the interior white side and the entire thing is called the pipa. So if you never had a coconut fresh, I've only had them in Southeast Asia, so let's give this a shot. Oh. Fresh coconut juice or coconut water, whatever you want to call it is just a million times better than what you get from the bottle. The stuff from the bottle tastes like really bad. I, I, I hate it, but this stuff is really good. So let's get on our little colonial adventure here. As far as street food goes in Costa Rica, you're not really gonna find any. From what I've seen, they have the Granado ladies, what we tried in Alajuela last episode, and the Pipa guys rolling around. Other than that, you can buy fruit in the street, but as far as like hot food or prepared food, all of that's done at Soda is the more traditional place to get um, to get food, the local spots. Other than that, no street food. So now let's get into a little bit of history. Costa Rica was part of the Spanish colonial empire uh, from basically the start of the 1500s up into the start of the 1800s, that's 300 years. Spain obviously left a lot of remnants here, whether it was the food or the language, um, the little bit of the social structure here. So in the early part of the 1800s, the Spanish grip on their colonial empire was kind of falling apart as they were enduring a costly and very confusing war with Napoleon. This kind of led to the revolution that you can find in Mexico that led to the Mexican territory, which went all the way up to New Mexico, where I'm from, all the way down to basically Colombia, uh, saying, okay, Spain, we're done. We're gonna be our own thing. So in the early 1800s, Costa Rica became part of the Mexican empire. Then it became part of the, what they're calling the Republic of Central American States. It was a federation for just like seven years, which included Nicaragua, El Salvador, Honduras, and other places like that. After that, in the mid 1800s, they declared their independence. And now we've had Costa Rica, uh, I guess, going on their 150 years of independence. That's a pretty long time, pretty good for Central America. After declaring their independence in 1821, Costa Rica took kind of, kind of a while to get things started. It wasn't until like the end of like mid 1860s that they figured out a democratic government and really began ruling their country. They were having the trouble with their supply lines from the Americas and from um, the United States and European allies. So it was really hard to get the country running, but they knew they wanted independence. They knew they didn't want to be part of the other places. Where I am here in Liberia, it was actually part of Nicaragua until 1821. So it's a lot less Costa Rican. They have more of a cowboy culture. They have a little bit more of a Northern vibe and apparently their accent here is a little different than what you would find in San Jose, the capital. So behind me here is actually a, the Museo de Guanacaste. It's an old military barracks that the Spanish set up a couple hundred years ago. Now it holds uh, local Costa Rican artifacts, including stuff from pre-Columbian peoples, as well as old Spanish artifacts. It's closed today, but I just wanted to show you the outside traditional Spanish barracks. Costa Rica today is actually in quite an interesting position. They actually make most of their energy from their volcanoes through hydrothermal or, or geothermal energy collection, as well as hydrothermal dams. They actually sell this to almost all countries in the region and are one of the only countries in the world that are like a net positive producer of energy that they sell more than they consume from themselves. Very interesting. So they invest here in a lot in technology as well as 
having tourism be their their main focus the ecotourism is the biggest industry here it's definitely people definitely aren't coming here for the cities everybody's coming to the city stopping for a day heading to the national parks to the volcanoes to the beach side to the very very interesting things that they have here with the very beautiful ermita de la agonia so hermit of agony church spanish colonial style i will ask this question because costa rica for me has been one of the most paradoxical countries i've ever been to it's wealthy it's expensive here to eat out it's over eight dollars nine dollars ten dollars an apartment here is expensive in san jose it's 600 700 a month for a decent apartment uh, for my airbnb i paid 35 dollars a night to stay in liberia but this country it really feels poorer than vietnam which is one sixth of the price one seventh of the price so the question is with this geothermal energy with this hydroelectric energy that they're selling what is the reason why it's so expensive here and i just really don't understand it if you know comment below in comparison costa rica is almost more expensive actually is more expensive than my hometown albuquerque in the united states but the quality of life here is certainly lower so what does this expensive existence mean for the costa ricans what it means is pura vida pura vida is anything you do you know it will be what it is it's the good life so it's expensive here and a lot of people here struggle they've definitely come out of a lot of poverty and some you know central american violence in the last 30 years and costa rica is one of the safest countries in the area regarding nar narco trafficking um, as well as just just violence and security issues that you find here in central america that being said um, people here seem to take it simple pretty easy life small cities small pace and it's kind of refreshing to come to a place that's just taking it easy you know they do say they take it easy here in central america and i really feel it for sure with regarding the country it's kind of split into two you've got the caribbean side at caribe um, which has the it's very diverse there's a lot more people who are afro latinos from the an enslavement period in central america and so it has a little bit more of a caribbean kind of jamaican -y vibe and then the western side is much more typical latino or latino mixed with the uh, native indigenous people so it's more traditional like central american peruvian kind of uh kind of vibe so uh very interesting country overall just very paradoxical very very paradoxical place and that will be my one takeaway as i leave costa rica and i'm still not sure what to make of it today Pásale. Before we get to the big food, I want to show you guys caldosas. Caldosas? From what I from what I get is they, they open this bag of chips and then they fill it with ceviche and then you top it with chili sauce, with mayonnaise, and with some ketchup. And so you get like a little fish in there, you get the kind of crunchy things from the chips, you got like a little bit of salsa, and it's all about the uh in Peru they call it agua de tigre, which is like um ceviche water, so it's that marinating juice that comes from ceviche, which is a fish dish where you put raw fish in a lot of acid so it cooks in the acid so you don't actually need to cook it. Absolutely delicious. So I'm very curious how the caldosa will be. I'm very, very curious. I gotta do it on the ground because we're we're doing it, uh, we're doing it solo out here. It's tough sometimes to film, but here we go. You got the meat, that's the fish. You've got the chips in there, you got the agua de tigre. Let's try it. Mmm. Yes. You're really good. Oh my god. So for 1000 colones, which is like a dollar 70 cents, you get a ton of fish. I am really impressed. That might be the best thing I've had in Costa Rica. Mmm. It really hits on every note. It's salty, savory, kind of sweet, acidic. You got the raw fish, delicious. Something crunchy in there. Fresh crunch from the onions. Mmm. Costa Rica, you've done something well. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed our little tour of Liberia. What food do they have here? 
a little bit about the history of Costa Rica. And if you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, super helpful for me. And we will see you on our next stop on this Costa Rican adventure. Hasta luego.